Hi, I'm Claudia Giacomo, the co-director and co-founder of PAV, uh, the Italian-based organization dealing with performing arts. We are the project leader of this Fabula Mundi Playwriting Europe Beyond Borders project. We have gathered 10 countries, 15 partners among theatre, festival and culture organization. We are doing the next step of Fabula Mundi since we won the large-scale funding of Creative Europe which will fund our project and will last till 2020. There are many, many activities foreseen in our project and we are very happy to develop them. As usual, we will work with contemporary playwrights. We will have a pre-selection of playwrights, so we will have 80 playwrights promoted and diffused around Europe. And then with them, we will make also a work of audience development and also of personal and professional growth. We work also with other eight twinned country because given the fact that we contacted many, many theatres in Europe and we had the interest of many, many theatres in Europe, some of them who were not able to join us as former partners wished to be involved in the project. So we studied this twinned mechanism which will allow other eight countries and eight theatres to send us their playwrights and to help us to increase the diffusion of their text and so to enrich our text proposals to different theatres among our countries. So this is a very important step So because at the end of the project we will have reached 18 countries, 18 dramaturgies which will be promoted all around Europe. We have started a training session for all the playwrights involved in Fabula Mundi, and this training session will take place after the first year of the project and will be focused on the peer-to-peer -peer exchange experiences among the different playwrights and will be a core part of our project. We have many other activities, which are the audience development activities, which we intend to work with segmented targeted audiences in order to promote and develop contemporary playwriting to those who have never even heard of it. Another very important step that we add to our project is all the networking activities because it is very important that we connect with all the other networks working on contemporary playwright. So we intend to build eight national networks and then after that a European network that can work on contemporary playwright and can promote throughout Europe the whole contemporary playwriting valid and strong in Europe. So good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this first uh, webinar of this Fabula Mundi Festival. I am Tere Badia, I'm Secretary General of Cultural Children Europe, who is a proud partner in the project. And for those that doesn't know, Cultural Action Europe is a major network of your European cultural operators, artists, networks, national and international organizations, at which main goal is to put uh, culture at the heart of uh, the public debate. Um, but let's go to Fabula Mundi. Thank you for this very nice introduction. Uh, these images of people gathering in one solo place and uh, without any, any social or so physical distance are somehow a bit melancholic right now, but uh, okay, <laughs> uh, that's what, uh, what we have at, the, at this moment. On the other side, so uh, yes, so Fabula Mundi, of course, was planned uh, this week. Uh, as a Fabula Mundi festival. It all should be a festive week in Rome and in person it changed, but due to this COVID uh, crisis uh, has been transformed into this digital platform through these webinars and happy hour talks. Uh, this week, Fabula Mundi will host three webinars and five online happy hour talks. This first uh, webinar, the one that starts now, uh, focuses on the role of Creative Europe in developing contemporary dramaturgy and the, and the performing arts. On Wednesday this week, we will host another webinar on specifically on audience development, focusing on how did Fabula Mundi tackle the issue of audience development and how Creative Europe addresses the same issue in other large-scale projects. 
And the last webinar on Friday uh, will discuss how Fabula Mundi worked on the capacity building activities addressed uh, to playwrights. And in addition, for you to know, we will host every day uh, from Monday to Friday at 18, so at six in the afternoon, uh, we will host this happy hour talks, uh, which will feature conversations between Fabula Mundi authors and directors, and it will be moderated by Mercedes Jovinat. So, so we, of course, invite you to join the live stream the whole week uh, and through this Fabula Mundi website and the face, Facebook page. But uh, let's start with this webinar. <clears throat> so Creative Euro, it's the only program in the European Union which is dedicated to support cultural cooperation. We will explore here uh, the role of Creative Europe scheme in developing cross-border cooperation, contemporary creation, and common cultural space. But we mostly will go in depth uh, of the, in the specificities of these three large-scale performing arts projects supported by Creative Europe. And uh, we will also discuss the role of Creative Europe, uh, that Creative Europe plays in them. And finally, how can we better support these large scale projects? For discussing these topics, we have here four panelists. First one will be Claudia Di Giacomo. Uh, well, we've seen her now in, in, the, in the screen, in the video, is co founder of the Rome based organization PATH, together with Roberta Scaglione. Uh, she co-directs a uh, path in the development of many projects, defining strategies in order to support contemporary theater and theater makers. Claudia also runs the international department of PATH, and her major commitment is as founder and project leader of this European funded uh, large case, uh, which is Fabula Mundi Playwriting Europe. Claudia is also a professor of theater managing uh, at the University of Rome three, three, and at the National Academy of Performing Art of Rome. Claudia, hello. <laughs> uh, Cosetta, Cosetta Nicolini, uh, con uh, she has been working uh, with the companies um, so Societat Rafaelo Sancho, directed by Romeo Castellucci, where she was in charge of relationships with public institutions, management and organization of productions and international co-productions. She has been managing a lot of European projects, Tragedia, MDG, Endoco, Nidia, Comedia Inferno, Purgatory, Paradis, and from 2015 start work, starts working with Emilia Romagna Teatro as responsible of the European projects of the foundation. Then the third one is Claudia Chancho. Claudia is a cultural manager, curator, researcher, and lecturer and uh, deals with performing arts, international programming, and cultural policies in Europe. And in her career, she has worked creating and managing large-scale cultural cooperation projects at national and international level. And currently, she is the co-curator and project managing manager of the EU-funded uh, large-scale co-project uh, Be Spectative. She's also being the PhD candidate uh, candidacy at the University, University of, of Antwerp within the common, Cultural Commons Quest Office and co-founder and board member of the Italian-based organization Living. As you can see, the three projects are managed by three um, very, very um, experimented uh, women. And then last but not least, we have Hugh uh, Pegat, who after graduating in, transla in translation and film studies, uh, she, he started his career at the European Commission as a translator. He worked for 10 years in the film uh, sector, mainly for the support program media and the French CNC. And then he moved to the um, Culture and Creativity Directorate, where he developed EU-Asia Cultural Policy Dialogue as well as the new EU strategy on international cultural relations. He is now in charge of the EU Prize for Contemporary Architecture and the OMC Expert Group on High Quality Architecture. And he contributed to the European Europe of Cultural Heritage and to the implementation of the European Framework of, of, for Action uh, on Cultural Heritage. And as for 2020, he is also dealing with the new, brand new uh, Creative Europe scheme to support the cross-border circulation and digital contribution on, of performing arts. Um, thank you all and welcome. Uh, before I give you the words, uh, we have also a contribution. Uh, this one 
uh, is from Donatella Ferrante. She couldn't be here. She's from the Italian Ministry of Culture. She couldn't be here, but she sent us uh, two words just to introduce uh, the panel. Uh, and I'm gonna quote now. It is a real pleasure to bring you greetings on behalf of the Italian Ministry of Heritage and Performing Arts. I will have attend to the meetings, but unfortunately I can do, uh, I can't do to work urgent reasons. Today's, today's meeting represents a fundamental moment uh, of discussion since the sharing of different experiences, practices and outcomes produced an added value to the project's reflection. I would like to contribute to today's dialogue Firstly, recalling the inner un unpredictability of any living things, and secondly, providing reflections on post-COVID period. The Fabula Mundi project was conceived as a challenging proposal for the dramaturgy since the languages barriers in the theater appear to be a limit, limit and risk fast factor in the execution of the spoken theater attitude. However, this element was not only overcome but it also produced a positive effect since it created, it created an exceptional level of development among artistic relations. This development has been possible thanks to the capacity of artists and professionals to believe in new approaches and to set new practices. Moving to the second point, I would like to underline that, that in spite of the fact that COVID pandemics has forced everybody to change their projects and to making and remaking the planning of activities the lockdown has been also a time to rethink the model of relations in time of mobility impediment. To conclude, I would like to mention the importance of this conference for a public institution perspective. Indeed, the gathering of different professionals coming from different environments can produce new, unexpected, and constructive reflections, extremely useful for all levels of governance and public administration. So, thank you. I want to thank Donatella from this distance and uh, for these words. So let's start with uh, Faula Mundi project. So Claudia, we have heard some uh, words on um, the video before uh, that, that you were screening before on Faula Mundi. It is incredible. You have been having to, you had uh, 15 partners. You set up this twin partners, the process and large network, you involved 164 authors, you supported 153 productions and stage, stage presentations and produced more than 324 texts. This is large. This is not only a large scale project with, with a large scope of activities. So please, could you tell us a bit more about the project itself, the main goals, but also the main challenges that in the development of this complex, I imagine very, very complex project and the final achievements. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for all you all to be here because it's an honor for Fabula Mundi also to host these other two big scale projects which uh, we admire very much the work of and would, with which we share a lot and, and we have a lot in common. So for uh, as, as you see the, the video that was sent before was, uh, was done in June 2017. So it's, it's really another era so far because it was just the beginning of the project. It was just the press conference of the project. So we had lots of uh, very good intentions and we still had to come and see what was to happen. And many things have happened, many more things that we imagined that would have happened. Some haven't, you know, so this is always uh, in a process of a big scale project is always, is always a, very, a very interesting challenge. So we figured that showing the intentions and then having us talking about what happened, it could be, it could be the, the, the two points from the beginning to the end. So I would like to share the video with you so that I can, I can show you some, just three slides in order to, for us to, to follow it better. And the, um, this is us. Okay, so this is um, so this is as as you see. Have you seen the before the the big map of Europe, and all these colors? So this actually is our partnership um, 
frame because as you see the the formal partners are the one which are listed on the on the right so the 15 partners you were mentioning they are all listed on the right as, uh, as they are uh, but uh, and so they are corresponding to the green countries and the and the yellow countries and then there are the red countries which are actually the twin partners the ones that we figure they could be in the project but for some many different reasons they couldn't and so we had we were able to have relationships also with them as you see the 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 green the green and the yellow countries are countries which we have been sharing a lot because some of them were already part of fabula mundi since the very beginning because what is interesting to say is, is that fabula mundi was born actually in 2012 without european support because we started to work from italy with five countries. Uh, so it was Italy, it was France, it was Germany, it was Romania, it was Spain. So we started with a pilot edition without European support. And we were sending Italian playwrights in all these countries and hosting foreigners playwrights in Italy. And then the second year, the 2013, was the first year of the two of the small scale funding. So we won twice in 2013 and 2015 with the same number of countries. So it was Italy, France, Germany, Spain, and Romania for two editions of Fabula Mundi. And then we decided for the big jump. We decided for the big jump during the edition of 2016. We said, okay, we should we should now gather more country. We should now gather more stories. We should gather more people. And so we actually enlarged this, this network as much as we could, as much as was possible for doing. Of course, um, gathering partners for our four years project it's a big commitment because of course in order to be a partner you have to co-finance the project and so some could some couldn't that's why we invented this twin this twin uh, system so with the twins it was a much lighter relationship so they didn't co-finance the project but they were intellectual nurturing the project because they they sent us playwrights to to with text of playwrights to read and to discover and so there was a very essential relationship also the one with the with the twin partners uh, as you see uh, the numbers are quite stunning also for me because actually in these years we've been working with a, a lot of people but it's not on the numbers that i want to draw your attention but it's on the quality of some activities which you might not um suddenly read as 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 uh, important that were even most most important for us so we have shortlisted 120 authors uh in this just only for the large scale edition we have an enormous archive of a thousand more plays and we have an enormous number of translations so the archive which is actually all open in a sense of just writing to us we just send stacks and it's very nice because we receive um, emails from all over the world, from Australia, from the uh, United States, from South America, just wanting to read text and wanting to and get to know some of the European playwrights. Then, of course, we have done many actions. This is also because the local impact of Fabula Mundi was growing more and more important because we gather other co-funding, and that's why we also could able were able to to enlarge the number of productions and stage presentation, but also the training activities were part of all this project. In fact, we were not, as we did in the small scale, just simply promoting the, um, the, the, the author in the text, but we were actually investing more on the person. So we've done a lot of training activities. Uh, we published tests. We've done this eight national meetings, which were meetings at the very beginning of the project, all the partners were traveling in order to meet the playwrights of the selection. So for example, we went to France to meet the French playwright, we went to Spain to meet the Spanish playwrights. And this moment was a journey every 15 days, which today it seems a dream because of course we cannot travel anymore and not that often, but it was, it was really the cement of this large scale because we were able to see each other every 15 days and we had the enormous gift of listening to the poetic and to the themes and to the to the, all the inspiration of these amazing authors that we met. We were, as I said, we were more investing on the people because actually given the fact that we wanted to, to help the playwrights to build their own way in the international setting, we have studied nine mobility programs which were studied for the playwrights in order to meet each other and to build a community. So in order to build this community, we have been making 
um, creating meetings among playwrights which didn't know each other before, which didn't know what to do in this four days that we have settled for them the meeting, which do not know what to expect. And this is it's a le it's as as an important seed which has been growing and growing in time. Just to give you an example, now in this in this precisely day we are having our playwrights all all gathered in this protest against the fact that the, the University of Budapest has been, you know, um, blocked by the Orban government. And so they have decided as Fabula Mundi playwrights to make an action. And this is, I think, one of the most imp important actions because they felt to be part of a community. They felt they wanted to do something as Fabula Mundi playwrights. This is quite remarkable from my point. It was not our idea, it was their idea to just gather and do something in, in the actual political situation. And this was possible after, you know, three, uh, four years of insisting on the fact that we are actually a community. We have been traveling a lot, as you see, it's more than 600 travels among for authors and partners, which were a dream up till March, because of course, then we had to stop all our activities uh, about mobility, and then we had to turn it into our uh, Fabula Mundi effects program. The workbooks which are coming out, it's an important study on contemporary pride and translation, which is done by the University of Kent, by Margarita Laira, and the ADU strategies, of course, are very important for us because we've been given a section on this. So this is what we will see in this week. As you see, it's a Fabula Mundi effect. So all this will be online on our website. All this could be could be followed by uh, by all the audiences in in every part of the world, and I hope that will give you the measure of how this important was emotional, was important, was meaningful for all for all of us. Thank you very much. So thank you very much, uh, Claudia. So I think you were pointing out also not even explaining or probably explaining the project, but three very, very important things for Creative Europe. I think it's <clears throat> this first one is this uh, possibility to open the consortia to other partners that cannot match the co-financing rate. This is always one of the topics of, of the always uh, Creative Europe. This uh, uh, the opening the, the, the consortia to this um, economy of sharing knowledge, I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think it's it makes the, the project very very important and very uh, interesting. The other one is this mobility limit um, limits that we are having now. So it's uh, that it's not only affecting the people, just uh, the, the audiences, and uh, but it's also affecting deeply the this cooperation uh, project. And then this uh, the, the the one that the last one that I think it's very 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 nice to see that you really. Uh, create a community which can act also politically. So, and I think uh, in, in the case of this, uh, the, the defense or the, this manifest demonstration on freedom of uh, academic and artistic expression, I think it's uh, crucial. So thank you very much. I think there are two nice points to, to, to this guys further. So um, let's go to Coseta. Coseta, uh, uh, you are running, so you're lead, uh, leading the Atlas of Transition uh, project. Um, Atlas of Transitions aims, uh, it's also a very ambitious uh, large scale project, aims at carrying out spaces of encounter focused on audiences development and outreach by developing strategies of interaction and reciprocity between new citizens and newcomers. Uh, these are two huge topics is audience development and the participatory practices bringing together individuals and communities from different cultures and backgrounds. Uh, please, can you introduce the project and talk about the specific challenges you encounter in this, uh, in, 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 in the achievements of these main goals? Okay, uh, thank you. I share my screen. Okay, uh, so um, Atlas on Transitions is a project that is going to an end at the end of this uh, uh, of this year. 
uh, we were supposed to uh, finish before, but uh, our activity was uh, um, seriously impacted by COVID emergency, and so we delayed uh, the end of the project. Um, as you said, in these last three years, uh, we have uh, um, mainly investigated the relationships between performing arts and migration and looked particularly into the potential of performing arts uh, to create spaces of intercultural dialogue and, and encounter for between European citizens and migrants. Mm, the, mm, the partnership is composed by 11 uh, partners uh, who also worked uh, with uh, a network uh, of university stakeholders uh, who contributed to our work uh, through uh, the methodology of action research. These 11 partners are based in seven countries, um, which from the south to the north, which are very different um, from in, in the way they relate to migration. I underline this point because um, migration is a complex complex phenomenon which takes on different faces in different national contexts. Just to uh, let's imagine the difference that uh, there is between Calais, which experienced uh, the, the uh, incredible experience, the incredible jungle that then was um, uh, deconstructed and destroyed uh, right just before the, the start of our uh, project and uh, the situation in Warsaw where a real incoming migration doesn't exist, but uh, the, the level of fear and the refusal of migrants in the Polish society is uh, really strong. So this therefore situation which frame different conditions for migrants as well as different perceptions in local citizens. In this, uh, heterogeneous landscape, uh, we as a partnership uh, um, started, started from the assumption uh, that the performing arts can play a, cru a crucial role um, in providing diverse narratives uh, for representing migration, different from the toxic uh, public discourse uh, conveyed by media and political exploitation uh, and uh, can act as active and effective means for social inclusion being uh, performing arts uh, experience between the living bodies in common physical spaces so uh, tools uh, suitable to overcome fear of diversity and promote reciprocal recognition. For these reasons, uh, um, by exploring performing arts in this uh, uh, intercultural perspective, we choose to work especially on uh, interactive and participative practice with the double objective to actively engage people from different backgrounds uh, and targeting existing audience to overcome this kind of uh, negative perceptions of migration. Uh, I, I show you now which are the uh, main chapters, uh, uh, the main action categories we worked around. Um, given the, specificity, the specificities of the national context where we worked, uh, as I said before, um, we all uh, um, implemented very um, community-oriented projects. 
uh, and specific projects uh, addressed to our territories, uh, being agreed that uh, we were committed to work uh, uh, on uh, uh, on the base of some common uh, directions and giving particular importance uh, to, um, uh, to the sharing uh, uh, at the level of methodologies among us. Um, among these, uh, th these common directions, uh, I can mention, uh, for example, uh, the task uh, that we, we shared to work uh, um, with uh, mixed groups of people, uh, uh, mixed groups of migrants uh, and inhabitants uh, to work with, uh, preferably uh, with non-professionals uh, in participative uh, processes. Uh, to, um, uh, to adopt a multidisciplinary approach, so uh, to um, investigate formats uh, um, based on very different uh, um, artistic languages, uh, developing so a, a large number of uh, um, formats, uh, workshops, and so on, um, for example, we, uh, we implemented more than 60 workshop, different workshops uh, um, based on this experimental approach, more than 10 productions, uh, festivals, uh, one or more, or more than one edition of festivals in each country intended as common spaces uh, of uh, sharing, uh, as well as uh, uh, the, the web platform. Uh, the summer school uh, was supposed to be uh, the end of this sharing in presence uh, 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 after uh, three uh, years of common work, uh, but uh, um, it was uh, uh, transformed in a digital contact uh, and in content and uh, in a series of webinars uh, due to uh, the uh, COVID-19 emergency. Um, to the same, all of us, uh, we had to face some central issues in the development of this project. Uh, the first one is to uh, identify the right uh, tools uh, to, to reach our target that is represented by people excluded by uh, the artistic fruition. Uh, therefore overcoming uh, language gaps uh, and uh, also overcoming a feeling of distance towards theatrical institutions that are normally closed uh, and reserved uh, to local citizens. To do so, um, all the partners made a big effort and uh, um, employed particularly uh, outreach strategies, um, leaving their usual habits and going outside the theater walls. So working um, in, the, in neighborhoods, uh, uh, in public spaces, uh, in the place, in the location where migrants live. Um, for example, uh, in the reception centers, uh, uh, in schools uh, with a significant presence uh, of uh, uh, newcomers uh, or um, second generation uh, students. And uh, um, to carry out this kind of work, uh, seeking uh, the complicity uh, of a subject that uh, are related to theater life, uh, but uh, are crucial as mediators uh, to better understand uh, and acknowledge um, migration issues uh, from uh, a closest point of view. So 
um, each of us uh, uh, made a big effort to uh, create this kind of uh, uh, network around um, around our work and um, so experimenting a, a, a different way to approach uh, uh, people and to approach subjects uh, which uh, um, intended more as collaborators than as a potential audience. I think my my time is over, so I leave my the word. Yes, thank you, Cosetta. Thank you very much. I think we will have some time to come back to this uh, audience development and co-creation and co-participation afterwards, maybe in the in the discussion. Um, I would I would um, invite now Juliana. Juliana, uh, <clears throat> like Fabula Mundi, your project be spectate uh, active. Uh, has been granted twice by Creative Europe. In the first edition, you were focused more on, more on creating a sense of awareness among, the, among cultural organizations, citizens, spectators, spectators and artists. And in the second edition, you shifted a bit the, the focus uh, to foster the notion of strongly creative uh, processes of experimentation in the idea of a more inclusive and transcultural Europe and a stronger relationship between citizens and artists. So you are not tackling, I guess, so newcomers, but more the relation, this gap sometimes in between the citizens and the artists, which is another a big gap sometimes. So could you tell us a bit more about this project? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Tere, for the introduction. And also, thank you very much uh, for inviting me in this beautiful panel, because there are many topics that are so crucial nowadays. And I really like to see also, as Claudia was saying before, that there are also many similarities, that the methodologies that it would be great to, to share more and more, because uh, maybe this is something that we need more for, yeah, speaking more about this idea of European culture that more than ever is needed, according to what we are seeing in the uh, nowadays scenario. Yeah, I also will share the screen for introducing this perspective. So, yes, sure. Um, yeah, as you were saying, this spectacle started in 2014, uh, and it's a large-scale cooperation project. In 2018, we get a second, uh, we were awarded again by the Creative Europe program. And it's interesting for us uh, that uh, when we started in 2014, uh, we started having some experimentations in the field of the active spectators. We, li we like very much to define this perspective as a, um, a project that is strongly focused on audience engagement strategies in the performing arts, which means really uh, be connected with uh, a variety of uh, uh, social groups and then also with different uh, local areas. And then where, as also Cosetta was saying very well, uh, where the performing arts is an incredible arena for understanding social changes and also for experiencing and experimenting social and political uh, uh, ideas. So absolutely the European framework is uh, absolutely great. And uh, yeah, we were lucky because thanks to uh, the second uh, Creative Europe uh, um, support that we received to, since 2014, we never stopped the project. So we really had the opportunity to improve our uh, point of view, to work uh, for creating a strong community with the partners, with all the local groups of spectators and citizens all around, and with international artists that step-by-step step were introducing and were working uh, with all of us. Um, just to give you um, uh, an idea of uh, uh, the network, actually, uh, be spectacular since its second edition is uh, with uh, 19 partners in 15 countries that you can see here. And uh, it's interesting to see that there is a very a good diffusion in the European context. And uh, yeah, there are two main levels that I would like to underline here about the, 
the set of um, about the partnership of uh, this spectacle. First of all, that we uh, um, the, the the partners represent a variety of organizations in terms of. Uh, aims in terms of scale, uh, in terms of activities, and this is uh, uh, quite an important point for us. So uh, there are, for instance, uh, important international venues uh, that works with international festivals, dance and theater festivals. We have independent organizations. We have uh, um, residences uh, uh, devoted to dance, Nouveau Cirque, and whatever. So this is uh, quite important because this is fundamental in also this idea of pure learning network that I will uh, uh, describe later on with uh, my last slide. And um, we have also municipalities, which means that also some of our partners, they represent a bigger network so for us, this is very important because we can reach other local context uh, that can contribute also on this idea of uh, um, active spectatorship that is very linked to also a kind of notion of uh, uh, cultural democracy or participatory democracy where really we try to give uh, uh, space in different forms of decision making the maker to um, in, in the different areas and then we have also a research group that is uh, quite fundamental uh, that is really contributing in analyzing in observing and in uh, understanding failures and success of the project uh, which is represented by two university two research centers that are uh, really with the process of action research again contributing also in the way in which we are uh, monitoring and evaluating our project so basically what we do uh, as i said we are uh, a very um, a network that collects a variety of organization we co-program we co-produce we co-create we co-commission so which means uh, many things of course uh, first of all, uh, for us, uh, in, uh, in, uh, it's very important, let's say, the rule of the citizens, uh, especially in the local context. So in each of the artistic venues, which are 15 nowadays, uh, we have a local group of um, local groups of active spectators which contribute and which collaborate with the artistic direction of the different venues in uh, the art programs. This is very interesting because it's also bringing different cultural perspectives because in each venue, starting from the experience of Kilowatt Festival with Visionari, uh, where they were experimenting this idea of co-programming, each of the venues were really experimenting in different ways from different cultural perspective with different social groups how to activate these processes of co-programming um, and actually uh, and this is also can be reachable in all the publications that uh, we have produced um, we have an incredible and very interesting uh, observatory in Europe because as you can imagine the cultural perspectives are very different if you compare the northern and the southern part of uh, Europe like the eastern and the west part so really practices methodologies and ideas uh, the second aspect is uh, the way in which we co-produce in the network we of course co-produce performances among the partners and uh, what we ask to the um, to the artist is to uh, um, activate a kind of uh, um, collaboration with the local networks and with the local communities in which they have uh, their residences. Um, just consider that every production it takes place by means of four residences in four different uh, venues of our network, which means four different countries and four different cities. And um, we, of course, uh, give absolutely freedom to the artists to experiment and to use the art languages that they uh, consider uh, part of their uh, way of working. But what we ask is to nourish their processes thanks to the interaction with the variety of the local communities. So if you are working on the notion of whistleblowers or if you are working on the uh, the problem of migration or if you are working about uh, 
social cohesion, what we try to do, thanks to the support of the partners that are the key entrants in all the different local uh, uh, contest. Uh, the point is try to uh, create a connection with all the local networks that is, you know, crucial for the local context at the same time for the artist for uh, creating also a more complex and critical dialogue. In this sense, we co create a lot and uh, all the communities are strongly uh, supported in uh, being part of all these processes. One of the novelties of the second edition is uh, the work that we are doing in the frame of co commissioning. So basically, there is this new program that we call European Art Commissioner, where inspired by the French program Les Nouveaux Commandataires, we uh, are creating a connection between two different local communities. Um, and together with the mediation of the community managers, which is a, a professional figure that we are supporting a lot. And of course, all the um, staff members of our uh, partners, these two local uh, groups of spectators or citizens, uh, they started the process of discussion for understanding which are the common urgencies um, that they are facing and to which they would like to, I don't know, uh, open a debate. And could be really whatever. And, uh, and also the ages or the social representation can be whatever. We don't have any kind of limitation in this sense. Um, and uh, uh, it's interesting to see that uh, a lot of the power is, is given to these communities in defining uh, the topic until they find the, art, the, the, the artist to which they will commission uh, the art, the final art project. The art project could be a dance show, a theater performance, a public art piece, can be street arts, can be wherever. It's really up to the process. So this is a long-term process uh, that we are trying to enact. So at least six months of work uh, of exchanges, uh, analysis, uh, discussions in the frame of the two communities with the artists and with the partners are taking place. So now we are uh, almost close to see the first experiment that is taking place in a collaboration between the Tanet Spra uh, in uh, Pra in Czech Republic and the uh, Mitra Festival in Slovakia. The, and uh, the new project will, uh, will have the debut at the end of September, but unfortunately, we will not able to see it due to COVID as most of us, because we cannot travel. So just to give a few insights on uh, uh, where are we now? Uh, we like very much to define nowadays our uh, network as a peer learning network. So that was the important shift from the first to the second uh, edition. Uh, and for doing that, we uh, have tried to define some uh, key pillars for and methodologies for creating this kind of uh, mutual exchange between uh, the partners for learning from each other and from understanding the different cultural, social and political angles. So first of all, as I was mentioning, in each of the artistic venues, we have a community manager, which is a key figure uh, because as uh, the person that connects uh, the local context with the network and with the artist. So when an artist is in residency, the community managers is really the person uh, in charge for creating the right connections, for supporting the artist, it's nourishing the, the concepts, and then to create the, um, the right environment for developing the process. Uh, for um, uh, creating um, a more stronger connection in the network, uh, this community manager, since the beginning of the project, they have received a, a training led by the research team in which the aim was also to create a glossary and a common ground uh, around specific keywords. Because of course, what we are learning all together is that there are some words and some expressions that we are using a lot, but that of course, uh, they have many different meanings according to the rule of the place or the context in which we are using them. So as for example, participatory practices, co-creation, audience development, audience engagement, cultural democracy, participatory democracies that are still now really crucial in our idea. The second level is uh, um, the definition of internal qualitative evaluations. So for example, at the end of, our, of each performance, what we uh, 
what we did now we are doing online uh, was to uh, evaluate together um, the process in a, a positive with a positive approach so using the dust method that i don't know if you know it is really uh, based on the fact on creating uh, a good environment where you can exchange different perspectives and also the results of all the process in uh, with the residencies with the connection with the citizens together with the artists um, in an open discussion using different tools this is really it, it was really crucial for us for understanding that uh, really we are learning a lot from each other and also it's uh, uh, really useful for the artists at the same time because they have crucial feedbacks um, also from different perspectives for uh, understanding the efficiency of their work, if we can speak about efficiency, but also about the complexity that they were thinking in the beginning and the results of this complexity and how much they can be, you know, also cross sectorial somehow, because sometimes this is one of the aim. And then, of course, all the level of action research that is quite fundamental because uh, it's really part of all the process and it's a way through which we are in theory, uh, evaluating uh, failures and success, and through which we are observing how the organization are changing, which are the processes of decision making, if are hierarchical, horizontal, and whatever, and also how the artistic practices are changing because the strong interaction with the with the communities, and also how the communities uh, are changing, or which are the needs and which are the desires that were not respected somehow. So just few numbers. So the number of performances that were chosen by that will be chosen by the spectators around Europe, the number of productions, the residencies, the international conferences, uh, the European community artwork, the publications, and then also different actions that we did um, in the communication uh, action. Actually, uh, just today uh, we had. Uh, we have launched the, our third publication that is about really participation in Europe in the light of Creative Europe program. So this is also another contribution that maybe it would be nice to discuss later on. So I think that this is more than enough for now. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juliana. Yeah, you were also pointing out of uh, to at uh, time at uh the importance of reaching out not only the european uh, sphere but also the local uh, uh, communities which is which is crucial and the importance of the peer learning processes for interdisciplinary <clears throat> projects uh top projects that involve diverse sort of agents and agencies um, i would love to give the word now to ux Fekat. uh ux uh, yeah, so you've heard so many things now <laughs> from these projects that all tackling the crucial uh, points, uh, the goals of uh, creative era, which is mobility, which is inter intercultural dialogue, which is creating a common common space, common values, uh, which is um, enhancing mobility. So yes, uh, so we know Creative Europe, but I would like you to introduce a bit the new Creative Europe scheme to support this uh, cross-border circulation and digital distribution of performing arts. Uh, this was, uh, if I'm, if this was set up after so the COVID-19 situation, I guess, uh, uh, to try to to help and uh, to try to support specifically the the performing arts uh, sector. So how do you how are you going to tackle these uh, very very difficult um, issues right now, which is uh, mobility, which is co-financing, because we know that uh, small companies, small organizations, are not even able to to get the, the rates of of, of, of the co-financing. Uh, yeah, percentage that uh, Creative Europe is, is proposing. So maybe you have, yeah, probably more, more, much more information on, on on this new Creative Europe scheme, and maybe yeah, uh, you can enlighten us for a bit. <laughs> yeah. Well, first of all, thank you for for the kind uh, invitation and, and and introduction. But before I present the, the new scheme, actually, I would like to react uh, to what I, I've just heard because mm -hmm. I think. I mean, it's also linked, actually, yeah, obviously. Exactly. Thank you. So first of all, I mean, congratulations to uh, to all of you. I mean, to the three of you. I mean, it's not only impressive in, in terms of uh, numbers and, uh, and, and, and and figures, but also 
in the way you actually uh, implement uh, the, the priorities of the Creative Europe program. And I can say that, that in a way, uh, your three projects implement all of them. And when we talk about mobility, which is at the heart of the program, it's of course in, but also uh, audience development. I mean, we, we've heard so much, uh, so much about it and capacity building. I mean, the process itself uh, as such is already uh, in a way a capacity uh, building uh, experience, but also the workshops, the trainings you've, uh, you, you've proposed. And actually in a way you also integrated a fourth priority, which was actually the, the priority of a specific core to integrate uh, migrants to cultural activities. I mean, it's also present in your, in your projects, at least, uh, at least uh, two, two of them. And uh, in a broader sense, I mean, the local community, so I think this is uh, this is uh, very important and uh, more di more needed uh, than ever. Uh, what also struck me is actually the the, the presence of uh, action research and uh, actually the involvement of universities. And I think it's also interesting to develop methodologies to actually uh, give more sustainability to, uh, to to the projects because th this is also one of the major uh, challenges. But uh, in a way, it's a, it's great to see that Fabula Mundi started without. A creative uh, without European support with three countries, then move to five with a small scale cooperation project and now a bigger one with, uh, with 10 countries. So this is uh, really like the ideal uh, uh, growing uh, process for a cultural cooperation project in, uh, uh, in Europe. So this is very, uh, uh, very encouraging. Uh, and the, the, the reason I'm commenting uh, uh, on your project to start with is, is uh, because all these issues are obviously in our minds or were in our minds uh, when we designed the new scheme. And actually the, 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 the new scheme was actually planned before the, the COVID crisis, to be, to, to be honest, because uh, even if uh, the performing arts uh, sector is actually the, the biggest beneficiary of a uh, creative uh, Europe, there's no, I mean, there was no uh, real uh, sectoral uh, approach in, in, in the new program. We are now negotiating and we hope to uh, be able to finalize in time to, uh, to launch it uh, 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 next year. So this was the opportunity actually to, to give uh, maybe a more structuring effect to our support in the field of performing arts. So that's why we designed this, uh, this scheme, uh, focus on the distribution, the circulation, of uh, performing art uh, works because as I said, I mean, uh, mobility or cross-border uh, circulation are really at the heart of the, of the Creative Europe program. And it's actually, it's uh, a major uh, added value. And I think that uh, considering the, some uh, nationalistic uh, uh, trends uh, nowadays, it's, it's even more important than, uh, than before. So it comes at the right time. But of course, the, the, the COVID crisis uh, has had an impact on, on the way we've, uh, we've designed it. So first of all, uh, focus on a number of performing arts uh, uh, sector. So uh, theater, dance, uh, circus, and street arts. Music is not in because, as you may be aware, there's already a specific initiative dedicated to uh, uh, the sector of music, which is uh, Music Moves uh, Europe. So focus on those four uh, performing arts, uh, focus on uh, physical circulation and digital distribution. Uh, to avoid any misunderstanding, the, the goal of this new scheme is, is not to replace uh, live performances uh, by digital uh, uh, streaming or uh, recordings, uh, even if I mean, if they have proved uh, useful and welcome during the, uh, during the lockdowns. And of course, we have to take this new uh, reality uh, into account, but we see it more as a complement, actually, to uh, the real life uh, performance. I mean, as, as the name uh, says, I mean, it must be experienced live with the actors or performers in, uh, in, uh, in flesh and, uh, and, and, and blood. Uh, but again, as a, as a complement, uh, not only to actually to reach out maybe to uh, different uh, types of uh, audiences, uh, but also to, in a way, make the, the circulation uh, a bit more sustainable, because obviously not all performances can travel everywhere in Europe. We know the impact uh, this has on the, uh, on the environment, so we will also encourage a more sustainable touring uh, more sustainable touring plans, uh, trying to actually maybe create, uh, you know, networks at national or regional levels so that more venues can actually benefit from the touring of one performance and not uh, multiplying 
uh, you know, uh, one, one way, uh, no, how can I say that, uh, return actually uh, trips for only one performance in one, uh, uh, in, in one place. Um, so the, the, the impact of the COVID has been uh, on this uh, sustainability and uh, digital aspects, but there are some basic principles that need to be, uh, to be uh, maintained. So we want uh, an inclusive and accessible scheme. What do we mean by that? Uh, inclusive uh, in terms of uh, uh, audiences. So again, uh, audience uh, in engagement to make sure that actually these performances can reach out to uh, maybe uh, groups that are underrepresented in uh, performing arts uh, uh, venues and can be uh, in a way associated through uh, an audience uh, engagement activity. So it shouldn't be it shouldn't be only about touring one performance, but also trying to create a, a link with the local community, with the, with a venue. Uh, so, so that also it has a, in a way a longer and deeper impact. I mean, it's also a, a way to, you know, a way to make it more sustainable. I mean, in in a different uh, in a different sense, uh, accessible. Uh, that means uh, to uh, actually. Um, Establish uh, companies and the new, but also newcomers, because we also uh, want to be open to uh, experience, uh, as you are all doing actually in your uh, respective uh, uh, projects. So there should be a, a balance uh, between uh, the usual suspects, if I may say, and uh, the, the the newcomers. Also, a balance between uh, uh, cities and maybe uh, uh, rural or peripheral areas, which are. Uh, Often uh, actually uh, neglected in such uh, in such tools, and then uh, also a balance, uh, obviously between the between the, the, the different sectors. But let's say that all these principles are, are uh, actually in the in the tender specification that that were published, and so the winning tender will have to uh, cater for for these uh, for these dimensions. And actually, one of the actually the the project uh, or the scheme uh, would be set up in three uh, steps, uh, which I may summarize very very quickly. The first one would be a mapping of the state of the art of the distribution of performing arts in, in Europe. Then uh, a platform, an online platform, we need to be set up so that we can test actually these new distribution schemes with a number of uh, actions based on the principles I, I've just uh, presented. And then it should end with the policy recommendations because the ultimate goal, if if, if the scheme is proven uh, efficient and uh, brings an added value, a real ad added value, the idea would be to integrate it in the in the new Creative Europe program. This is like a, a test phase, if you if you wish. But uh, obviously, the the idea is to uh, integrate it in the in the in the program. And in the mapping phase, I was thinking while I was listening to, to you, and I will stop here. Uh, I mean, you, you, you should be associated because obviously uh, you've already tested uh, a number of, uh, for instance, uh, practices or audience engagement uh, activities, including online. I mean, this would be uh, in, in interesting uh, to, uh, to share with the, with the, you know, the, the future contractor. Uh, so that we, I mean, they, they already have uh, actually uh, uh, material to uh, design the, the, the future scheme. So I definitely think you, you would be involved in the, in the first phase. And of course, once uh, the scheme itself will be open, it will be open to everyone because it, it shouldn't be limited to uh, the winning uh, tenders, uh, wherever they are. Uh, it, it will be an, an, an open scheme to, uh, to all, uh, I mean, to performing com uh, companies, but also venues and, and festivals. So I will stop here, but of course I'm available for, for any question. Yeah, thank you very much, Luca. Um, <clears throat> yeah, you were talking about uh, something that this new, new scheme, I have also the feeling that uh, this new scheme is about uh, how to deal with time and space. <laughs> In a best in a best efficient way, uh, but efficiency needs uh, an added value. Needs also a bit of a bit of time. I will I will go to uh, now um, to to I will I would like to open a couple of questions also regarding 
uh, this this time because sometimes in, in in the projects that we are submitting uh, the periods are very very short uh, for getting for getting there where we want uh, to get uh, to 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 go and so claudia you're you're the longest uh, so on project uh, uh, right now so you started without creative europe and then you got two small so uh, small the creative europe project and then you got this large uh, scale project uh, could you talk a bit about the importance of having been this long period of time to develop and to check and to <clears throat> make mistakes and to learn from it uh, which yeah which is the importance of this i would love to hear from you yeah well, I think that time is actually the best alley for the European projects, because of course, when you have time, you have time to build in you know, structure and, you know, be in the in the process with a very easy way, because, you know, you have time to build it. Uh, of course, we wouldn't have imagined that in 2012 that this project would have lasted so much and we enjoyed it while we were doing it. It was exciting for us to first take changes and the first reaction of the partners. Of course, time can be a big threat also because actually all the, the theatres were not accepting to be partners when we jumped to the large scale. They were saying they could not commit for such a long time because they didn't know what would happen in their in their organisation. Their you know the contract would expire sooner than the country than the project and so on. So this could also be something very you know very very heavy in a certain time because of course we live in a very fragile world and all the theaters even the national ones are very fragile i mean the people change people go away from the different structure and this is amazing to remark also in the differences among different countries I mean, for example when you work with uk it's very rare that the person stays in its post for more than eight months so we have been changing you know the general director of, a, of an english theater for three times but this is because London is fast, everybody's moving very fast and so on. Why, for example, in other, in other situation, we still are with the same people since 2012, which is beautiful, of course, because you work and you built up a relationship which is strong, with the theater is always there and you always love the place and so on. So this is something which is also important to, to remark. Uh, time is also a very important uh, teacher in a sense, because we if I remember how we all were when we started, we have done a peer-to-peer -peer lesson to each other without even knowing that we were doing it because of course we had to to understand each other, we had to stay on the same procedures and also the administrative procedures were a lot different at the very beginning. I mean I remember you know theaters paying cash for amounts which were not thinkable in, in our countries and so you know we had to understand each other in the way that we should all behave in order to be okay for the European um, setting. And this was a really, a really up, uh, added value. Also projecting the new project was really a professional, uh, an empowerment moment because we had all together to think of what we wanted as next step. We had to see a vision of what we were going to do and we had to invent and really the, the large scale project projection was really something very very uh, unifying the partners because we had many meetings in in projecting them and so this was was very enriching and this could happen just because with some of them we've been working since 2012 and the, and the new ones were just getting to the big the community and the big family and were just uh, inserting their way their own way and their own new new things um of course, one of the things that we haven't actually reached as a, one of the main goals of the Fabula Mundi when we were thinking of it, it's the building of a network. Because actually we figured that network for uh, promoting contemporary playwriting was, for example, not the right format for all of us. Because we figured that the project structure with, the, with its dramaturgy, so the beginning, the goals, the end, and then the dissemination and so on, was the better, better way to launch it. Because if we have structured in a network, that would have meant that we would have kind of ended this continuous pulse for research and continuous pulse for learning that we are having given that we are in a project set. So I think also this one has been something we've been learning with the time because at the very beginning it was easy for us to melt all these priorities all together and say, okay, we'll reach them all. We're not reaching them all, we have many choices. 
and also the time gave you the time to make choices when you have been a very short time uh, project you don't have the time to really pose all the questions and see what what, what is really ma that matters for all of us where do we want to go and in that sense the having the time was a big luxury for us for Fabula Mundi once we got it after the small scale we said okay now we have four years to go on and so that was really uh, an important feeling mm -hmm. and of course the mobility the, as you said before time and space of course space had a really important aspect especially at the beginning of a large scale because moving every two or three weeks and meeting in each other's theater was something we've never done before it was something which really funded our structure very much and which helped us also to uh, go beyond the borders of translations, go beyond before the language barriers, because of course you could talk to a Polish playwright and try to understand him before them writing and reading his text, because the text was not maybe not translated in any other vehicular language, but you had the time and the chance to meet him. So this was something that we've been seeing how effective it was that each of us had met all the playwrights we're talking about. Thank you, Claudia. Uh, Juliana, I guess you, you, you've got also to advise uh, the creative your support. And I think your project is a lot about co-creation, co-programming, co-managing. So this co-condition, <laughs> condition of co-being with others. And this, uh, this commitment needs also a lot of time, I guess, a lot of time. So I don't know how you experience this in, 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 in your project. Yeah, no, I absolutely agree with Claudia because, of course, uh, time and space are needed and uh, crucial and fundamental. I remember that at the end of uh, the first year journey of this spectacle, I was taking part in different uh, discussions also in Brussels. I remember in a conference in which we were really discussing about the need of having time for uh, the cooperation projects more time also because you know when you work on the creation of the community and then when you work with uh, local actors and then you try to connect these local actors across europe you really need time and four years after four years you just start understanding which are the delivers which are your failures and which you can really invest so four times are a good time but of course it's really a very interesting starting point for creating something that can be really more transformative. So in this sense, uh, I have to say that uh, we had good results in the, in the frame of the project. Um, and uh, really the, the need of time was at the basis of uh, our second application that we were described as uh, a very crucial need. And in fact, for instance, uh, we were also uh, defining the importance of qualitative procedure instead of placing quantitative measurements. Because of course, again, so with you, we had different uh, exchange on this topic. Um, it's, it's crucial, you no, know, uh, tr trying to find the balance between the qualitative and the quantitative approach, because these are two different logics. And of course, when you speak about uh, community engagement and uh, democratic processes, the time is <coughs> crucial and fundamental. And the numbers very often are not so high, but these numbers can really have an incredible change in the practices. Uh, in fact, what we did in the second application was to have 15 productions in Steel 21 that we had at the beginning. And then what we decided to do was to give a fee to the artist for doing research. So again, time for doing research and understanding what you are saying, four residencies in four different places, and then also a support for touring. Because again, as we all know, and then also you was saying very well, very often, the problem of touring is crucial in the production and in the frame of uh, the cooperation processes. And the way in which you can create a very specific strategy of touring can really, um, again, address a specific and important and important topic. So that was one of the topics. And then another thing that I consider crucial in the Creative Europe, and then I think that is crucial in the perspective of time that maybe we need uh, to improve somehow. And also it's uh, really a different uh, perspective. 
as this idea of to be uh, to create translocal connections. Uh, translocal connections again need time. Um, Creative Europe, as all of you were saying before, and I think uh, you did it. Uh, at the beginning is the only project that really direct it's a direct funding for culture and uh, for cultural production which is uh, fundamental and uh, this direct connection that you can create with the commission and between the network that is uh, uh, more than ever fundamental creates this kind of solidarity this community that is fundamental in a moment in which we are assisting to the rise of borders, nationalism, and whatever. So um, time is needed for doing this, uh, this kind of job. And I think that in this creative Europe, we can really play a crucial role more than ever. So yeah, that's it. Maybe you have to unmute yourself, Tere. Thank you very much. Uh, yes, because uh, someone is said they are telling me that we have only 15 minutes, but uh, I would love to 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 introduce sort of uh, uh, another thing, another consideration that I think it's important. And, and the project of Corseta, for example, uh, the the idea of getting uh, the community involved. Uh, I guess this was also very important uh, to have enough uh, time. I don't know which is the, the role of the, this diversity in the management of the project, how this diversity to getting the diversity uh, in on board, uh, it's uh, influencing also the, 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 the management of, of your project. And if you can answer a bit. <laughs> Yes, uh, thank you, Tere. Um, so the the role of of the community uh, I want to underline that it is is uh, crucial uh, also in atlas of transitions because uh, um, the. Uh, to build, um, to connect a, 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 the largest possible uh, network uh, um, around uh, the, the project is uh, fundamental. And uh, it was necessary to do it uh, looking uh, project by project, case by case. Um, trying to find the right interlocutors. So, um, for example, uh, working with the field of activism, uh, the um, field of social inclusion, with the cooperatives and associations that devoted to the um, inclusion and integration of migrants, uh, and directly with the communities. So this, this aspect uh, is something that feeds uh, a lot the um, diversity uh, of, uh, uh, of the terrain where our work uh, was based um, and uh, I add that uh, um, uh, to work with mixed groups uh, for us uh, <clears throat> it, uh, it is a relevant matter uh, because uh, um, um, it is crucial, it was crucial for all of us to uh, involve migrants on equal basis uh, with the local citizens. Uh, that means uh, offering experiences that recognize subjectivities that are different and diverse, but are subjectivities that is not given for granted for migrants with, who are trapped into a, a, a double opposite uh, public rhetoric uh, where they are or uh, strangers, invaders or poor victims. Uh, that is this uh, a narrative uh, which uh, can sell completely identities, uh, aspiration, desires uh, and uh, individual identity. Um, in, to this aim, to, 
uh, at the level of diversity, uh, it was uh, um, uh, important also uh, to involve uh, artists from the migrants' uh, countries of origin uh, in specific uh, projects shared with mixed groups uh, and uh, uh, give uh, floor and voice directly uh, to uh, the communities uh, to to um, to give you an example, uh, we, um, we carried out a project in Bologna conceived by the well-known artist Tania Borguera, uh, which is titled School of Integration, and that was inspired uh, on the um, German schools address it to integration of newcomers, but in a completely reversed way. So uh, we, um, the, the project was organized as a cycle of 10, less, 10 lessons given by 10 different communities, residents in the city of Bologna, where they shared the contents and discipline that they were proud to share. So from handcrafts uh, uh, skills uh, to uh, poetry, to music uh, and the culinary traditions, uh, knowledge of bodies and so on. And these lessons happened uh, inside the university Therefore, just in the place where uh, the, the, the knowledge is conventionally produced. Um, uh, another, but out of this, uh, uh, an aspect that uh, I would like to, to underline about uh, the, um, uh, the larger scale projects and creative Europe uh, as adding element uh, to the, the ones uh, mentioned by Giuliana and Claudia is, uh, is from the point of view of a cultural institution. So the, the Creative Europe, I may say, uh, allowed at least for my cultural institution uh, to, um, to act outside the constraints and the uh, obligations that normally uh, um, give a, a clear direction and uh, to uh, the, the artistic choices. And so to experiment completely out of the habits uh, strategies of uh, audience development and outreach that uh, uh, it was uh, uh, impossible to, to experiment uh, in, uh, uh, in, in the daily uh, context of the work. Thank you, Cosetta. Uh, I want to, to, to take on board some questions from the, from the audiences and it's something that uh, I wanted to to ask already to 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 Lucas, but to all of you as well. Um, so um, the question is that the, the three projects it's uh, are good stories, good stories of success. But which are the limits of Creative Europe for large scale projects, um, with a specific reference to the performing arts sector? Uh, Huck, maybe you can identify already some limits. Well, I don't know what actually is meant by limits. There are always limits. Uh, there, are lives. there are limits in life, and we experiment them uh, uh, every day uh, these, uh, the, the, these times. I mean, we, we discussed about uh, time, and, and indeed, uh, time is needed to, uh, to experiment, to build uh, long term uh, uh, relationships. Uh, we believe that four years is a reasonable time to uh, to, to to do so. This is something we uh, we can of course uh, uh, discuss. Um, but uh, what I, I found uh, very interesting in uh, in Juliana's uh, intervention is also the, the this idea of uh, uh, developing actually uh, internal evaluation methods. Uh, I think this is uh, really crucial. Because if, if there's a limit always in time and in, in, in funding, 
actually, uh, you, you can in a way prepare the sustainability of, 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 the, of the project by evaluating it uh, uh, on the basis uh, of your own criteria, possibly with the, with the support of external evaluators. I mean, to, to uh, facilitate in a way that it uh, actually uh, lasts beyond, uh, beyond those limits and that uh, actually its, uh, its qualitative outputs are uh, in, in, in a way, uh, yeah, well, evaluated, but also consolidated maybe into a methodology that can be then uh, replicated or at least shared with other uh, cultural organizations or uh, local authorities uh, in, uh, uh, in, in Europe. So of course, uh, <laughs> there will always be uh, limits, but I, I think it's very important to integrate the evaluation and uh, the sustainability of the large scale, especially the large scale uh, cooperation projects uh, from, from, from the start. That, uh, and uh, it seems that's what you've been doing uh, 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 so far, but this idea of internal evaluation uh, method is uh, of particular uh, rele relevance and importance, I believe. Anybody wants to, to also share this, uh, the challenges? Uh, because we have another question on Creative Europe, but I, I will first uh, let you just answer if you have something very, very short to say on the challenges of uh, this large scale project. I think, if, yeah, if I may, sorry. Um, I think what it was a big challenge is all the, let's say, the paperwork that needs Creative Europe. So I think on that, we should. I wish there could be a reflection on, on what is actually asking to there's a the especially independent organization. I mean, we are not a cultural institution as might as the, the Emilia Romagna Teatro. We are a private organization, and for us, it's quite impressive the amount of paperwork which requires the project leader and which is being required to all the other partners. And for some partners, it's really unthinkable. I mean, we live in a very bureaucratic country, so for us it's quite easy to say that we need this and we need a contract and then the voice and then the bank extracts. I mean, for us it's quite quite not normal, but for some countries it's not really that normality. So I'm just wondering if we did the, you know, the, the checking of all what is happening. I would very much more like to have visits from the European Commission more often during my project more than just producing papers which, you know, of course can give you the work and the amount of work but it's it's really a barrier for some countries it's a big barrier to understand all the system of you know testimony with the with the papers what you've been doing juliana you wanted to say something no i agree with claudia uh, absolutely i think that the problem is really the different access to the um, to mm -hmm. the program from uh, different typology of institutions and organizations because of course uh, there are many differences and uh, absolutely I understand the need of the program to have uh, some kind of guarantees for uh, the economical perspective, which is crucial. But of course, uh, and more than ever also the economical scenario in the cultural sector is changing so fast. So the accessibility to the project is, to the program is uh, fundamental for many organizations. So maybe really it would be great to study together a way for guarantee the accessibility to different typology of organization that could be big institutions, municipalities, independent organizations that are really a high percentage of the applicants and the beneficiaries in the network. Mm -hmm. And then for sure, there is one of the things that I think is fundamental for all of us, but we all know so the fact that Creative Europe is such a crucial program with uh, such incredible qualities, but still the problem is the budget. But we all know, and there is Culture Action Europe that is guiding uh, a debate around that. But this is uh, something that I think that would be <clears throat> more than important for the sector. Yeah, that was that was uh, my last question that was posted also for, by someone <laughs> in the in the from the from the audience, which is uh, of course we know that the creative Europe budget has not been doubled uh, as demanded uh, by the cultural and creative sector. So the question is, uh, how does the next generation of Creative Europe program plans to support this cross-border artistic collaboration? And this is a question for you, Hux. <laughs> <laughs> We will continue, uh, <laughs> obviously, uh, with the main uh, you know, support schemes uh, we've, uh, we, we've put in place. Uh, but uh, to answer the, 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 
the few comments uh, we we we've just heard. Uh, of, of course, there's a there's a, uh, I guess a lot of uh, paperwork. Of course, we need to uh, ensure the the proper use of uh, uh, taxpayers' uh, money. We try to think things with the e-grant uh, application uh, uh, system but of course this is certainly one uh, uh, one limit but uh, I remind you that also the creative uh, creative your desks uh, are there are there to to, to, to to help you or to help uh, organization uh, participate and in terms of uh, accessibility I know it's uh, I mean it's a never-ending debate it's an old uh, uh, debate I think on the, on the on the one hand it's clear that uh, when you want to work at European level obviously uh, you need uh, uh, a stronger uh, uh, capacity to do so uh, also in terms of, uh, of uh, financial uh, capacity but th at the same time as we've seen for instance with the Fabul Fabula Mundi project I think it's a, it's a, it's a great idea actually to, to associate uh, uh, partners that are not official uh, uh, members of the of the of the consortium so so that uh, in a way they can obviously uh, bring a contribution to to the project but but also they they, they learn to to that process and maybe are in, in a way better place to uh, to uh, to apply and fully participate in in, in the future uh, in terms of um, of participation in, in in the new program what i can tell you at, at this stage is that we are uh, thinking about the, uh, we are uh, yeah, thinking about the co-funding rates, uh, which have always been uh, an issue and an obstacle for a number of uh, organizations. So, I mean, the discussion is, uh, is underway, it's not uh, finalized, but uh, we do realize that it is an obstacle. It has been an obstacle so far. It may be even more so with the COVID crisis. So this is something obviously we need to take into account. Uh, so to support the, the sector and its uh, resilience, so we, we are envisaging uh, to, to increase actually uh, the co-funding rates of Creative Europe for cooperation projects. Uh, so this is uh, something that, that is an, on the table and that would be a concrete uh, uh, measure to facilitate uh, the accessibility uh, for mm -hmm. some organizations. Yes, thank you, Luc. Um, yes, so we are running completely out of time for two minutes. Uh, they are just saying me that I have to close. Uh, so yeah, uh, something that was mentioned here, but we couldn't discuss it. I think it's, I think it's important and even to include it in the, in the Creative Europe uh, schemes is the, the role of artistic research. We have been talking about time. We have been talking about the importance of interdisciplinary approaches and we, we need uh, in these times that we cannot maybe move that fast as we <laughs> used to, maybe the, to use this time as well to, to reflect uh, how this statistic uh, research, so the importance of this approach, a specific approach to, to learn from each other, to create uh, new, uh, new knowledge and to create uh, other sort of experiences. So um, thank you all for your participation in the webinar. So it was very fast, it's a pity. So I could stay here for a while <laughs> now discussing with all of you. And uh, for the ones that are in YouTube, so remember that uh, Fabula Mundi events will last the whole week. It uh, will be another two webinars to, to have the opportunity to, to reflect and to learn more from the projects on Wednesday and another on Friday. And uh, in, I think, one half an hour, uh, we have this uh, happy hour talk uh, starting. So you are very, very much invited to, to join. Uh, thank you again. So it was a great uh, panel and we hope to see you around. Yeah, bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.